Um, but let's start with our cleansing conditioning cream. That's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our cleansing conditioning cream. So this is what it looks like, right? It's, it's pretty thick. It's kind of a, a, a thick cream and it's a cleansing conditioning cream. So it cleanses your hair and it conditions your hair at the same time. I washed my hair this morning with this. So this is what you need to know about this product. If you have been using a lot of product in your hair, you say you've been using a lot of moisturizer, a lot of custard, a lot of oil, you're using heavy oils like your olive oils or your Jamaican castor oils and things like that, and you're using a lot of product, you're putting your gel on there. When you get ready to wash your hair, you're not going to use this cleansing conditioning cream. This is one thing about this product. It softens, conditions, and moisturizes your hair really, really well. But if your hair is already gooped up with product and it's already over soft because you put a ton of moisturizer on it, you can just keep piling it on, your hair's not going to get clean if you use it. So I want you to know how to use it correctly, right? So if you're just a moderate product user, right, you're not overdoing it, you put your, you touch your hair, feel your hair, see if it needs something and put your oil on. See if it needs something heavier and put your moisturizer on, right? If you're applying your product like that, then you're doing it right. So when you go in to use your cleansing conditioning cream, it will clean your hair. But like I said, if you're using a bunch of heavy products, and here's one big one, waxes, uh, flat ironing waxes, um, also, uh, products that contain wax. Like we actually have one product that contains wax and if you're using waxes, you're not going to be able to get wax out of your hair, especially if you're using a lot of it, when you're using a cleansing conditioning cream or even a co-wash. So that is when you would turn to a regular moisturizing shampoo. So one thing you need to know as well, that's okay. One thing you need to know as well is that um, a regular moisturizing shampoo is going to strip your hair. It may not strip it down really, you know, uh, really bad or anything like that, but if, it's, if you see suds and bubbles, there's a detergent in there and it's still going to strip your hair. But what I'm, what I'm trying to get people to start doing, it seems to be a little difficult. I think because people are not used to thinking about their hair the way that I think about their hair, is touch and feel your hair. See what your hair needs instead of just being in a regimen of doing things. So if you start doing that, your hair will have just enough of what it needs and you'll be fine. Um, so that's one thing about this. Using this, um, if you have a dandruff, a dandruff issue or something like that, how do you use your cleansing conditioning cream? So say you're using an Isoral or a tea gel or a tea towel or something like that. You're going to use your dandruff shampoo on your scalp only. Try to just get it on your scalp. If you have short hair, it's going to be impossible. But use your dandruff shampoo on your scalp. Use your cleansing conditioning cream on your hair. So that's how you do it. So in essence, you would take your dandruff shampoo, pour it in your hand, just scoop it like this, part your hair, and put the dandruff shampoo on your scalp. Part your hair, put it on your scalp. Of course, your hair would be wet when you do it. And then take your cleansing conditioning cream, put it on your hair, down the length of your hair, and wash your hair. So that's how you wash your hair if you have a dandruff issue and you're using more than one shampoo. Um, detangling. So if you've used this product, you know it's an excellent detangler. How should you be detangling your hair? How, you should be, how should you be using the product? So this product, you should take the bottle with you in the shower. This is, this is the reason why. When you're in the shower and you wash your hair, you have this constant stream of water coming down, right? So you put your, your cleansing conditioning cream in on your wet hair, Work it in, scrub. When it's time to rinse, you take your wide tooth comb and you stand under the shower head. And you comb your hair while the water's coming down. I'm telling you, it's the best thing that has ever happened to detangling besides the cleansing conditioning cream. Having that water come down while you're combing and detangling your hair. So take advantage of detangling it. Now, here's something that, th this is how, this is really how you wanna be able to approach your products when you're doing your hair. So this morning, when I washed my hair, um, I had used like cleansing, I used my curl custard two days ago. So when I wet my hair in the shower, I could tell that my hair was soft. It was, it was pretty soft. Um, so when I went in with my cleansing conditioning cream, I washed it really, really well, and I rinsed it really, really well, and it was still soft, right? And you know, when you're scrubbing your scalp, you can feel if there's something on your scalp. You're gonna scrub, get it off, right? So I rinsed it a second time really, really well. But 
When I detangled my hair with the cleansing conditioning cream, I knew I did not need to use conditioner. So this is, this is a very important thing because if you have dry prone hair, like my hair is dry prone, that means if I don't use a product, my hair is going to be dry. There's no question mark of maybe it's humidity. No, it's going to be dry. If you have dry prone hair, then you can use multiple moisturizing products. You can use a cleansing conditioning cream. You can use an oil. You can use a moisturizer. You can layer your moisture like that. But if you don't have naturally dry hair, like say you have hair that's kind of stays somewhat soft, or hair that, especially, especially wash and go hair, where you know you just put something on it and it magically looks gorgeous, then you probably don't have dry prone hair. And, and you're the one that needs to be careful about layering your moisture using a cleansing conditioning cream your hair is already soft but then you're going to use a moisturizer to soften it some more then you're going to put an oil on then you're going to use your moisturizer that's like four layers of, of softness and your hair can actually break from being oversaturated and over layered with moisture most people with naturally uh kinky dry hair don't that we don't have that problem with our hair ever being overly moisturized but like i said if you don't you don't have dry hair then you're going to need to make sure you're touching and feeling your hair to know how much more mo moisture you need or don't need right uh let's see curl definition what you need oh yeah go ahead i will um curl definition so one thing about the cleansing conditioning cream is obviously if your hair has definition after you wash it right you haven't bushed it out by stripping all the moisture out with a regular shampoo then you're gonna have more, more curl definition for when you apply your wash and go products. You know, if you're trying to wear your hair out and you wanna see a curl. So that's the benefit of using a cleansing conditioning cream before using your curl definers. Because it is a curl definer. The better your hair is conditioned before you put your curl defining product in, the better your curl is gonna be defined. Um, obviously the benefit of not stripping your hair is that your hair gets to stay soft. Right, soft hair leads to longer growing hair because you know it doesn't break as much. In terms of what I was saying before this morning about conditioner, so let me get back to that. So I knew I did not need to put a conditioner in my hair after using this because my hair was super soft after I used it. Okay, so for me, after I use it, I want to use my other products. I want to use my other style. Don't put conditioner in your hair if it feels soft after you use a cleansing conditioning cream or, or your co wash. If it's already soft, why are you doing it? <laughs> so, unless it's a protein conditioner, or you, you know, you gotta know what you're using it for. Um, the cleansing, so I get, I do get questions about, um, should I use the cleansing conditioning cream if I have locks? So one of the things I can tell you is that our clients that have micro locks, they come in the really, really tiny locks. I do sell a lot of cleansing conditioning cream to them because it softens and moisturizes their hair without leaving the buildup because it rinses out. After you rinse it out, it still leaves your hair soft. So you know, some people that have micro locks or tiny locks are concerned about over softening. This is why a lot of times their stylists will tell them don't do it. Don't put a heavy moisturizer there. Um, so they'll use the cleansing conditioning cream because it actually conditions their hair just enough for it to be soft enough for them to not have to worry about it. So if you have traditional locks and you're only washing your hair once a month or every three weeks and things like that, this is not for you, okay? The cleansing conditioning cream would not be for you if you're not a person that washes your hair more often than that with locks. And that's because it's likely that you have a lot more buildup, right? Three, four weeks not washing your hair, you got a lot more buildup, you're using product, then you're layering it on, you're not washing it off. This, you, you wouldn't use this for that if you have locks. So, our, our next product is our dry scalp treatment. So this has our 13 essential oil blend in it, right? So the 13 essential oil blend, this is a preventative care product. Our line is our preventative care product. What does that mean? That means that you're taking care of your hair to prevent things from happening. That's why you use hair care products, right? But the great thing about Fabulous products is that our stylers are also preventative care products, whereas a lot of times stylers don't care about your hair. They just care about, you know, um, shaping it and molding it and laying it and slaying it and whatever you're going to do with it. Slaying it? <laughs> yes, laying it and slaying it. If I could think of another word that Ron, I would say it, but I'm all out. 
Oh, so he's he's over here making our um, what is this? Is this curl custard. peppermint curl custard? This is curl custard. This is our peppermint curl. This is made. Oh, this is lavender. Lavender curl custard is it made. It's made. Okay, so, so I'm a jar of this is yeah. So we do make this fresh, right? So this is let me show you. This is a lavender, the lavender curl custard. This is what it looks like. You put it in your hair. It's a custard. So see how it. Kind of like a gooey custard, but it's really softening. And I'll get to the custard and what's so wonderful about using this wonderful product in your hair. This is probably my favorite, along with the dry scalp oil, the um, clean condition cream, the styling paper, and moisturizer. Okay, so preventative hair oil. So things that nurture and feed your hair follicles, things that kill bacteria and fungus in the scalp, things that soften the hair, things that help regenerate the, the cells in your scalp, that's what preventative care is. And that's what's so incredible about central, essential oils. They're actually active ingredients that work in your oil and in your product. The great thing about our product is we only have natural preservatives. Like, shea is naturally salty, it's a natural preservative. Um, regular store-bought products, one of the things is that they're using, if they're having to make 15,000 products for Wegmans, uh, 10,000 for Food Lion, 15 for 15,000 for Giant, then they're going to have to have a preservative that keeps the product from going bad, which also lessens the potency of essential oil. So that's one of the other reasons it's really good to buy from a manufacturer that's making the product, because by the time you get it, you're using it, it has a year shelf life. You will have used it. You don't need them to put something in it that makes it last for five years because they bought 40,000 units. So that's one of the great things about um, not having those, those preservatives in there. So what do we use oil for? Um, sounds like a regular question that everybody knows the answer to, but guess what, they don't. Because <laughs> I just found out by asking questions that people have no idea why they're using their oil. They just think, oh, you just put it on there every three days. I put my oil on and I put it on my hair and that keeps my hair good. But if you have, say you have dry prone hair, right? I'm gonna tell you, oil, oil doesn't moisturize my hair at all. Like, it does nothing for moisturizing unless you don't have dry prone hair. So if you have Caucasian hair, mixed hair, Dominican hair, things like that, you can take some oil, put it on your hand, bring it down your hair, and your hair will be nice and soft and moisturized. <laughs> well, guess what? Uh, my hair doesn't do that, and, and most people with dry prone hair, it doesn't do that. So oil, what we use oil is for sheen, to clean and feed the scalp. Sheen and to clean and feed the scalp. That's what your oil is for if you have dry prone hair. So we get clients all the time, I've been oiling my hair to death and it never feels soft and moisturized. Well, that's probably because you have dry prone hair and oil's not gonna do that. So every now and again, you know, you, you may have someone that has that mixed, mixed texture that's kind of dry sometime, like a combination hair where uh, it kind of moisturizes it some. But the majority of people that have dry prone hair, then oil is not really going to moisturize their hair. If it's a black castor oil, you may get a little more moisture with it, but all your regular oils that aren't super heavy, like black castor is like, it's thick. It's a super duper thick, syrupy, honey texture oil. Uh, but that's, that's the only way you're going to get it out of an oil. Um, let's see. Good for controlling dandruff. So yeah, so the 13 essential oil blend is good for controlling um, and maintaining basic dandruff. If you have something beyond basic dandruff, then you're going to need extra help. So, you know, like your support dermatitis, as I explained in another video, your scalp has to be healed before you can use an oil, and it should be a very light oil, and it should be an oil that's treating the dermatitis. So if you have support dermatitis and your scalp is inflamed and it's bleeding and it's scarring and la da da da, you're not going to be using oil, okay? You have to have proper shampoo proper antifungal creams and things to heal your scalp first. Um, powder treatment. So there's a lot of confusion with customers about why they need a powder treatment, when they're going to uh, use a powder treatment versus going like a deep conditioner. So again, you know, oils, essential oils, heal and clean the scalp. When you do a powder treatment, you're doing it before you wash your hair. The oils penetrate into your hair follicle, Killing bacteria, pushing dirt and oil and stuff.
up, up to the surface so that when you wash your hair, you have a deep cleanse. That is what a hot oil treatment does. So you get that when you're having scalp issue. Now, yes, it does help make the hair feel a little silkier and things like that. So some people get it for that, but most people don't because they're using a the moisturizer for that or real, conditioner for that. say real quick how many ounces of oil? This is a four ounce oil. Uh, we, we only sell it We only sell it in the four ounce. We're having a 30% 30 per, 30 off sale right now. Um, it, we also have a kit that has a small two ounce size of all of our oils and a one ounce, I'm sorry, two ounce size of all of our products and a one ounce of the oil. But this is four ounces and this four ounces goes a long way. And keep in mind, okay, keep this in mind when you're when you're buying products and you're using systems, if you're really paying attention to how your hair feels, you'll use a lot less product because you'll come off of a regimen. You don't need to be on a regimen unless you've done the math to determine that, okay, every three days my scalp starts itching, therefore I do this or that. Um, so, so yeah, so these are 30% off. Um, our next product... Uh, oh, so this is normally 15, but it's 30% off now. And we'll be running that sale for a minute. Because I, I haven't heard anything changing about this coronavirus here in Maryland. Coronavirus? <laughs> please, please don't. <laughs> please don't cheapen the... I had to do that. I'm sorry. The somewhat conservative environment that I've created for the last 20 years. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> okay. Um, so the curl custard... <clears throat> So, of course, this has our 13 essential oil blend in it as well. So just to let you know, it has the 13 oils, but it, it comes in lavender and peppermint, which means that you still get all of the oils, but you get a boost of lavender or a boost of peppermint. Well, what, how do you know which one you need, right? So if you're buying product based on the smells, then I'm asking you to go a little bit further with, with it. So peppermint is really good for killing bacteria. It's actually also antifungal. Um, it gives you that nice, fresh feeling, um, that nice, fresh smell. If you work out a lot and sweat in your scalp, it kills bacteria that causes odor in the scalp. You know, a lot of times when we have thick hair, we don't want to wash it as much as it needs to be washed. Peppermint is going to help you with that because, you know, it, it keeps those smells at bay. Especially if you have locks, you need something, that, an oil, it's a cleansing oil. Peppermint is a cleansing oil. It cleanses your, it cleanses your hair um, at the same time that it refreshes it. So peppermint is excellent for that if you're working out and things like that. Lavender, it's a, it's, it's a very good softening oil. Um, lavender also kills bacteria, but it's not as strong. It's not as strong as peppermint. It's light. Um, it's very relaxing. Uh, it's very moisturizing. It's very soft. If you need something to kind of just, you know, bring you down and, and help you to relax. Um, and it does that for your hair as well. You know, so if your hair has been through a lot, buy products that have lavender in it. Your hair, you're doing too much. It's, it's stressed. It's the same thing for when you're using lavender when you're smelling it. So those would be the differences. So for the, the curl custard, you want to be able to use, well, there's a lot of things you can use this for. I just took some notes so that I don't, I don't want to leave anything out here. Um, so the curl custard is our intense moisture therapy. This is our intense moisture therapy and aloe, okay? That's what it is. It's the intense moisture therapy. So if you use intense moisture therapy, you know how terrific it is. Just imagine that product with aloe. So aloe has holding properties. Um, with it, which, which allows you to have more definition if you're doing your wash and goes, if you're doing your twist outs, your braid outs, your flat twist outs, etc. Um, the great thing about this versus the moisturizer, these are, these are the two. I didn't have the jars, they're not filled yet, but that's what we're going to be getting to. Um, I'm going to do a comparison here. So, can you do a twist out with a regular moisturizer? Yes, but you have to mist your hair with water because something has to wet the hair. When you take your twist out out or your braid out out and you use the regular moisturizer, you're gonna notice that it is a soft definition. It's a soft definition and it's more of a, a bouncy, kind of fluffy twist out um, if you just use moisturizer and you do it and you dampen with water. The curl custard, what people like about the curl custard and using this for their twist outs and flat twist outs and things like that is because the aloe wets your hair for you. It wets your hair for you. Especially in the wintertime. You don't want to be walking around.
want to wear the wet head of hair. You don't want to, you know, have water dripping down your face onto your shirt. And you've got to, you know, change your clothes or it's cold. You don't want your scalp to be cold, whatever. You put this on, it's going to dampen your hair for you and moisturize. One of the great things about this, what I like best about this product is that I can go back into my hair, right? So if I have my hair like this, if I put it in a ponytail, by the way, my hair is like this because I haven't done my hair, so don't judge me. Uh, but yes, I'm going to do a video later on how to trim your own hair. And I came up with this new style that I think you'll be able to do even if you don't know what you're doing. So I want to be able to show you that. Um, but yes, I can go back in. So you know how you, if you have like 4C hair, if you have kinky hair or coily hair or mixed kinky coily, and you do a style, right, it starts coming together like this. But you want to go back in without breaking your hair. You know, you would pick up that comb of that brush and start combing over top of hair that's starting to mat together. Your hair's not going to grow because it's going to be steady, steady breaking more than it's growing, right? But when you put this on, if you're going to go back in, you'll notice that it just starts loosening up and you can just work your way right through it. So that's what I love most about this product. Our Intense Moisture Therapy. 13 essential oil blend, preventative care product. Um, this is great for a two strand twist, um, braids, any kind of styling, pretty much, where you just wanna be protective styling, right? Um, you also, like I said, you can do the fluffy twist out with this. This is an excellent sealant. So after you use your cleansing conditioning cream, that's the first step, remember we talked about that, you wash your hair. If you need conditioner, use it, if not, Go straight to your oil if you need oil. I didn't need oil this morning after using my cleaning condition cream. I went straight to the blow dryer and it was perfect. So then you're going to use either your intense moisture therapy to seal in the oil that you put on your hair, right? Or you use your curl custard. If you're doing a twist out or out style for definition, you use this to seal in the oils that you just put on it. So both of these are sealants. But this is a straight moisturizer. You have dry hair, you just, all you care about is moisture and you need something that's going to moisturize your hair. This is it. Locks, so with your locks, you wash your hair, um, use a moisturizing shampoo, put your conditioner on there, rinse it off after you finish, load up with locks, load up with intense moisture therapy while your hair is wet because your locks expand when they're wet and that's the only opportunity you have to get the moisturizer inside of your locks. That's the reason why every time you try to put it on in between shampoos, it sits on the outside of your hair and never feels it's soft. So that is that. Um, this is a long term, longer term moisturizer, meaning if you put oil on, like I said, you have combination hair or mixed hair, you might have you know, some short term moisture, right? If you ever use the lotion, short term moisture. When you get heavier like butters, you get the longest term moisture you're gonna have pretty much, right? Creams almost but butters that's going to give you longer term moisture you got to know your hair though to know what's going to work uh, a oil a lotion a cream a butter right dry prone hair butter right um this locks in moisture with protective styling so say you use this and you did two strand twist your intense moisture therapy say you use this you did two strand twist you did cornrows you did flat twist those are all protective styles you don't have to reapply this if you took your hair out in three weeks and you use this for your protective style, it's going to be soft when you take it down. Now, if you're using this and you're wearing an out style, like this is considered an out style, this product, after your hair absorbs what it's gonna absorb, it will leave your hair because your hair is out. So if your, your hair is damaged and things like that, use this and put your hair away in a protective style. Um, this doesn't have any holding in it. It doesn't have anything that holds your hair, okay? So want to make sure you know that. It's not gel. You know how you put gel on and do your two-strand twist and it holds it and it looks a certain way? No, it doesn't have any holding. Again, it's, a, it's just it's a moisturizer, a very good one. Um, it also seals your split ends, right? So that's why a butter, the heavier your product is, the more you're going to get a seal on those split ends. So, so use a butter for that, especially if you, have lot, if you have a lot of split ends. And lastly, our styling paste. Okay, styling paste. What do you use the styling paste for? So, you use the styling paste for braids. If you have, want to put just cornrows in your hair, braids, you can use the moisturizer for that as well. But the difference is that this actually has beeswax in it. So, before you go crazy jumping off buildings, diving into the ocean, whatever you're going to do about beeswax, there are so many types of beeswax. So many types of beeswax. Not all beeswax attract 
uh, ants, flies, gnats, or whatever you've heard. It's just not true. Um, and also, you're mixing the wax in with other things, okay? So you're mixing it with primarily shea and 13 different essential oils, right? So it's, a, it's diluted. So you don't have to, I've had people that have heard that and they stick with it. Like they're just like, oh no, I heard beeswax, this, that, and that, and that. It's just not true. Like, now I will say this, you can use beeswax mixed with Vaseline, like some, some of the products on the market, that's what they are. They're beeswax and Vaseline, then they have some oil in it. And because they're so sticky, then naturally if it's a sticky product, but that could be your gel, that could be anything that's sticky like that. It's gonna attract stuff that's in the air if it's flying, you know, floating up in the air. So this product melts into your hair. It's not gonna be sticky when you put it on. But the great thing about a wax is, it's a super sealant. So if you thought a, a nice heavy butter was gonna seal your hair, the wax is a super sealant. The other thing about the styling paste is that if you're not, especially right now, doing your kids' hair at home and all of the stuff at home, um, the great thing about it is if you're not like a, a professional hairstylist and you want a neat braid, it wets the hair, not wet like water, but when you put it on, you'll notice the hair is a different texture. So it kind of, um, how can I put it? If you ever use a wax, like a curling wax or something like that, it just makes the hair lay. That's what I mean. It makes it lay and it comes together where when you pick up your pieces to braid, it looks neat, right? So this would be good if you're if you're also a beginner at braiding the home and you need something a little neater for you. This is what we use for lock maintenance at Fabby Locks. It melts into the hair and it makes the locks super shiny. Okay, so it holds the hair, melts into the hair, makes it super shiny for your locks. Um, what order would you use the products in if you have locks? You use a regular moisturizing shampoo, use your conditioner, use your oil on your scalp, use your intense moisture therapy down your lock. Remember I said put as much on there as you need. And then you use your styling paste for your lock maintenance. That means, you know, when you're binding the loose stubborn hairs. Um, lastly, and that's it. That's, that is all, these are all the products that we sell right here. <laughs> So, if you have any questions, I will check. Sure. Give me one Go quick on. second. Can you entertain? Okay. He's going to show you some things about our product so you can see. Uh oh. And introduce yourself. <laughs> introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I am Rashad. I have been the product maker for a very, very long time. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the product that we're making. Um, I have no idea where my wife went, but right now we're making intense moisture therapy. Our intense moisture therapy, we use 13 different essential oils. Um, it's a long list of essential oils that we have come up with over the past years, over, well, more than the past few years, but uh, we have found that these certain essential oils are the best ones to use for your hair and for your scalp if you've had any kind of scalp or hair condition. Um, as you can see, it is a very homemade process. You know, we start with raw shea and we use olive oil and we whip them together. It's quite, a, it's quite an intense process, but that's what actually gives it, gives it that, whip, that whip feel. Once we do that... Wait a minute, are you giving out all of our secrets about how to make this All product? right, I'm out the way then. I'm, not, I'm gonna give out any more no, secrets. No, no, go ahead. I just wanted to make sure. You know. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, what, but the, the, secret, the secret is in getting the whip shade the way it is. You know, after that, the second secret is what essential oils are we using to heal everyone's hair? Because everyone is loving the product, people hair it's is improving. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's on the door. But the amount. But the amount. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's the and amount. Then, is it a cut oil or uncut oil? It's a lot to it. See, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. We're we'll working, but it is a very homemade process. Um, I, I enjoy doing it. Okay, so just real quick, we went over that. You got all the information that you need. I will go through your questions. Um, I, to scroll back up. I know, I would have to scroll back up. Nadia, Ingrid, um, Kia, my eyes, oh, Tammy. Hello, how's everybody doing? What can be used? What is this? 
We're going to use for hair breakage around the nape of your neck. So it's going to depend, okay, because what's causing the hair breakage around the nape of your neck? Is it the headband that you might be wearing and tying in the back or the scarf that you might be wearing and tying in the back? Um, do you have a scalp condition? You know, because sometimes if you have excessive dry scalp in that area, there's a sign that something is wrong. You know, um, of course, stress. Yeah, stress can definitely cause hair loss. Um, a lot of times with clients, uh, when they have stress-related hair loss, there's a circle. It almost looks like ring burn, except there's no ring. It's just a, a broad circle of hair where the hair has come out almost in a perfect circle. And that's almost always stress-related hair loss. But, you know, there, there are a lot of reasons that hair could be breaking in the back. But if you feel back there and it feels like your skin is harder back there or drier than the other areas of your hair, or it feels itchy back there, you probably want to go to a dermatologist just to make sure you're not developing some sort of scalp psoriasis or dermatitis because those things can cause your hair to fall out in certain areas as well. Um, hello, how are you? Believe God, yes, especially right now. <laughs> Let me set this up. And don't mind my split ends. I told y'all I'm going to be cutting them. We'll show you how to cut your own split ends um, later on today. But I do want to thank our buyers. You know, right now it's kind of a scary time. Like we are just blessed and grateful that you care about your hair enough to buy our products and to support our business because we're hairstylists. I mean, you know, we're not able to really. Uh, earn income the way that we traditionally do. So me as the owner, you know, I'm trying to keep the places open <laughs> and I'm just very grateful, you know, that, that you guys have been coming through for us like you have. Um, one thing is, you know, small businesses right now, local small businesses, I mean, we're really, we're, our competition has suddenly become Amazon and, and you know, uh, CVS. I mean, how do you compete with, with these places that are selling your product you know, selling hair products and people are going there, well, you know, I'm sure they have a little more money than we do, <laughs> but, you know, so it's just been a real blessing to have your support and I'm, I want to thank you so much. I'm just going to read off the names of our, our most recent buyers. Um, this money is going to pay the rent. That's, that's what it's going to do so that we can keep our stylists working when it's time to come back with this. It is scary, I mean, with... You know, in Maryland here, we, if you can do essential workers hair if they have a, a letter um, showing the regulations for hair and, you know, if hair is a hazard, but they're most likely to be infected. You know what I mean? They talk about a one-on-one -on -one service. So it's scary. The thought of going back is scary. I'm not going to lie. It is scary. Um, and then the thought of, you know, someone giving you something or you giving them something as a stylist. That is scary. Um, so I'm just hoping people are honest, you know, that they don't come if they're sick. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it is really scary. We're not going to be opening up for a couple of weeks, though. God willing, the numbers will have gone down because I'm not trying to open if the numbers haven't gone down. So meanwhile, your support means everything. Um, it means everything to us. You guys are the greatest. I will never defer to Amazon. <laughs> I always feel great just leaving the shop. Well, thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate that. I'm glad you could be of, of some assistance. I'm using up my other shampoo before I start using the product I recently bought from you. Okay. Well, thank you for purchasing those products. I appreciate it. Even though you had the rest of your products to use, you still bought our product, and I, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much. What can you recommend for a person with eczema and thin hair? So... One, you want to know that you have eczema. A lot of people think they have something. Um, they'll say, oh, I've got um, seborrheic dermatitis or oh, I've got eczema. Make sure you have a, a dermatologist uh, tell you what you have. And when they do that, they should be recommending a prescription strength cleanser, some sort of shampoo um, to keep things at bay, some sort of topical solution. And if you don't have a topical solution, ask for one. Um, my daughter has seborrheic dermatitis. They weren't going to give me a topical solution, but I had to actually tell them, listen, her, her dermatitis, is she has flare-ups, she has allergies, she has a lot of things going on with her skin in general right now. You know, she's getting ready to be a young lady. Come over here, Nora. <laughs> Come on over here. What do you mean? Oh, my like God. A, this sounds like an infomercial. 
<laughs> she's getting ready to be a young lady. She's 12 years old and she's going through all of this, all of this stuff um, with her scalp. But, you know, because she does have 4C hair as well, I had to tell her, no, I need a topical solution with this shampoo. So make sure you ask for that. Have your, your prescription strength shampoo from your dermatologist. Ask them for a topical solution that you can use in between. That's really going to help. And you should definitely switch to all natural products and you should definitely not be using anything with alcohol in it. Right? Gels. A lot of gels have alcohol in it. So those are some basic changes that you can you can make. Um, I received my product. I'm seeing great results from using Intense Moisture Therapy. It does not feel sticky. Well, thank you, Gail. Yes, it's an awesome product. I mean... I hope you believe me. Like some people, oh, you're the product maker. It's your line. Of course, you're going to say, no, listen. The intense moisture therapy is incredible. I'm trying to tell you. Listen to Gail. I don't even know her. She wouldn't be lying about it. <laughs> What's the product order for dry prone hair again? Okay, so the product order for dry prone hair, cleansing conditioning cream. This is what you're going to use to wash your hair. If your hair is soft after you finish using this, you don't need a conditioner. Make sure you tangle with this in. If it's not soft enough, use a conditioner with it. Um, uh, your dry scalp oil, you're going to put this on your scalp and on your hair before you do your black blow dry. And if you're not blow drying, before you use your styler, which is going to be either the um, curl custard for twist out or any out style, or the intense moisture therapy for protective styles, or the styling paste if you're doing braids or if you have locks and you're doing lock maintenance on your hair. So you want to make sure you, you moisture up. So think about it. One level of moisture, your cleanser. Two levels of moisture, your oil. Three levels of moisture, your moisturizer and stylers, right? And if you're using a conditioner, that's four levels of, of moisture. So you should be good to go. Um, how long is the potency? How long is the potency of your product? Okay, so essential oils, right? Keep the tops on your essential oils. Don't put your product in the sun. It'll melt, and it also lessens the potency of your essential oil. So, um, usually essential oils, if you, if you leave the top off of your essential oils, over time it will weaken. And you'll be able to tell because it won't smell the same. When you first buy a product from Fabulous and you open up that top and you take a whiff, it's heavenly, right? <laughs> but leave that top off and then check back in in about two weeks, and you're going to notice you don't have that same wonderful so it depends. If you're keeping your product good, you're keeping the top on your product, the smell is what's going to tell you um, how potent it is from when you first bought it. Not putting it in the window or in the sun, sunlight in the, in the, in the, uh, the back of your car on the, the little hood like that so that it'll liquidate. If you're not doing any of that, you should be able to keep this product, the intense moisture therapy, at full potency for about four months. After that, potency starts to decline. That's anything. I mean, it's a natural product. You can also boost the potency of your product by adding um, oil to it if you need to. So adding a pure essential oil to it. Um, because I know a lot about essential oils, uh, I will tell you the safe oils to add if you're going to on your own, maybe lavender. Because it's almost impossible to, to put too much lavender. You, you would have to lose your mind and put the whole jar in there pretty much to um, end up overdoing it. Um, should I order the curl custard? Well, depends on what hairstyle you're going to be doing. You know, if you're going to be doing a twist out, coil out, if you're a ponytail wearer, um, braid out, out styles like that, a person that likes to go back in and change their hair a lot, then you should order the curl custard and it moisturizes your hair superbly. Another thing about the curl custard is if you need extra holding, sit under a dryer after you finish your hair with it and you'll notice a nice cast. Absolutely, your product is great. When I had luck, I was good to go after leaving your stylist, okay. Tiffany. Tiffany is awesome. Yes. I'm sure she won't be able to wait to see you again. Yes, and thank you again for coming to our salon. Okay. Thank you. Um, just real quick, I definitely want to thank thank our, our customer. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one is. And I'll answer some more questions as well. But um, I want to thank Renee Murphy, Yolanda Stobel, Cassandra, Kimberly Savage, um, Darlicia, Yvette, Dossley, Shirley Austin, Valerie Durant, Cheryl Schumack, Shannon Hayes, B. Thompson, Yvette, um, Rimahi, Kim Claiborne, Denise Thompson, uh, Marjorie, Crystal Talley, Kenneth Moore, Sandra Kemp, Takwa Mopley, Eric Sterling, Barbara Denise, Antonia, no, Antonisha Jones, Kosil Reed, 
I hope I'm saying this right. Um, Kiva Smallwood, Keisha Williams, April Flood, Nadia Russell, Celeste Roney, Ashton Johnson, Chantel Carter, Scallery Colbert, Corita Andrews, Valerie Wings, Joyce Donaldson, Antonia Williams, Ashley Jackson, Andrea Marshall, Carla Battle, Deborah Lee, Becky Rice, Hajara Shakir, Angela Wells, Virginia Thuo, Rashida Bilal, Shanisa Austin, Atiyah Muhammad, Renee Harris, Linda White, Gertrude Dees, Virgil Riley, Tracy Taylor, Shante Hill, B. Okay. Underwood, <laughs> Jolena, yeah, Shante Hill, she, sh she sold us our house. She's a real estate agent in there, pretty good. Um, Lorraine Franklin, Daphne, Leslie Barbara, Sonia Mitchell, Sheila Harper, Sandra Gaines, Annette Logan, Gail Hall, Marilyn Thompson, Chanel Williams, Serena Carson, and Keisha mm -hmm. Wingfield. Thank you. These are orders from this week. Thank you so much for helping us out and, um, and really caring about our businesses. I'm going to tell you right now, listen, small businesses in your area, wherever you are, support those businesses because those businesses maybe they'll go out of business it's none of that they will go out of business you know why because they're not receiving money <laughs> okay they're the funds of all of the applications and things they're not receiving money I don't know any of them that have gotten it um, you know so that is a that's a real issue so support your even if it's a little bit inconvenient even though you can purchase on Amazon those businesses will close seriously they will close um, you know, so it's, it's a very sensitive subject. Uh, I know we get back into the hustle and bustle of things, we forget, you know, we go back to convenience, but people are going to have to pay for that. And it's going to be us, right? Um, but thank you all so much. I truly, greatly appreciate your support. If you need something, let me know. I have a website, fabulous.com. If you're having a problem with your hair, we have consultation forms. They're free. You fill it out. Ask me whatever question you want to ask and I will respond to, to help you with whatever you need help with. Take advantage of this opportunity. Listen to me. When it's time to go back to work, I'm not going to be as available as I am now, right? If you have questions, you should ask those questions. I would love to help you. Um, but there were a couple of questions that did come up, so let's see. Uh, what product can you use to keep hair slicked back that doesn't have alcohol? <laughs> this is it, Nadia. <laughs> Um, you use this. I know you, so I know your hair. Yeah, I know you have that. I don't even know why she's asking yeah, I this question. Hair will be good too. She's looking for an edge. Like, is it edge? Oh, it's an edge. I'll, I'll, I'll call you. Um, but she has, let me just tell y'all something about Nadia Bilal Mitchell. She has the kind of hair that lays down with water. So she must be bored right now. <laughs> she has that kind of hair where you want to slap the person because the hair always looks perfect for no reason. That's her. Okay? over there. Can't wait to purchase my products. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you purchasing the products. Again, if you have questions, just let me know. How can I care for my locks now that I have to do it myself? Like shampooing and possibly retwisting, my locks are waist -lit. Okay. So it depends on your level of skill. If you have no skill whatsoever, you should definitely go on fabulock.com and fill out that consultation form because I will help you um, just learn how to do some very, very basic lock maintenance. And I do FaceTime. Um, I can take a look at your hair and look at what you're doing. You can show me. And I can show you something easier that will help you. Shampooing your locks. Honestly, if you have a lot of locks and you got to shampoo your locks, I feel for you because it ain't going to be easy. Okay? It's just not. Just get some beach towels out, you know, wash your hair, mm -hmm. suds it up, suds your, suds your locks up really, really well. Oh, Take no. your locks and rub them together like this. Try to, try to make sure you can see bubbles. If you can't see bubbles when you're washing your locks, that means your locks are not clean. You should be able to see bubbles come up when you wash your locks, okay? So um, use a moisturizing shampoo and make sure you wash them really good. Keep them separated. If you can't do lock maintenance, fine, okay, fine. You can't do lock maintenance. But take your fingers and run them through the roots of your lock so that your locks are not matting together at the roots because of that throw that has developed because you haven't been to your style. So those are the things you have to do. But fill out the consultation form. I can definitely help you further. I have thick hair and 
Back in December, I had an allergic reaction to hair dye. I am looking to promote new growth. Um, press it for me. Can you please advise me, advise what product you have that can help promote regrowth? So, it sounds like you said you had an allergic reaction that caused your hair to fall out because you're looking for regrowth. So I'm thinking that, that that's what you're asking. Um, so one is, you should definitely go to a dermatologist because someone needs to take a look at your hair follicles to determine whether they're open, whether they're start over, whether they're closed. And that's going to tell you what your approach needs to be. In the meantime, keeping your scalp clean and using a product, an all natural product that feeds your follicle and that regenerates cell growth, and keeps your hair moisturized, your scalp soft like it's supposed to be, at least you could be doing that. But you really need to take, you really need to go to a dermatologist to have them take a look at the, your scalp to determine whether hair is going to just grow right back out because you can still see the little dot where the hair comes out. Sometimes that's closed and you have to do things to open it, right? The color of your scalp, is your scalp more on the white side, is it more on the red side? You can tell, you can tell how much blood flow is in an area of your scalp. Those are the things that need to be examined. So I would say start by going to the dermatologist. Um, it says that you're saying that you're already you already did it, your hair is growing. So if your hair is growing, um, then continue to do what you're doing to make it grow. Um, make sure you're eating healthy, make sure you're drinking water. One thing about hair growth is there's no magic product, like you're asking about what product you can use for your hair growth. Um, there are preventative care, there are things that feed your follicle, but say your hair grows at its maximum one quarter of an inch a month. There's nothing that's going to make it grow an inch a month. It, it, it hair doesn't do that. Um, you know, that's a misconception. But since it is growing, stick with that and maybe make sure, you know, if you're not using all natural product, switch over and make sure you do that and that you're eating correctly. Um, I just thought of my locks, but I have really dry scalp. Always have, have I always have. Do you have any recommendations for my scalp? It itches. Um, so one hot oil treatments, you might be, you may be a candidate for that. Depends on what's going on with your scalp too. Is it dry and you have been diagnosed with a scalp condition? Or is it dry and you just have dandruff, right? So there's some things that I would need to know. Um, if it's dry and you just have dandruff, start doing, using a dandruff shampoo, start doing hot oil treatments. If it's suborbic dermatitis, you definitely need to go to a doctor so that you can get prescriptions for products for that um, and antifungals. Um, are you able to do the master consultation via FaceTime? Um, yes, we are. So if you fill out a consultation form, yes, I will contact you to find out when you're available. Good information. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your questions. I hope to um, hear from you. If you need help on our website, fabulock.com, you can buy products from there as well. And again, thank you so much for your support. And one last thing. I have to introduce you to the head woman in charge here. She's been secretly hiding in the back, pretending like she's working. So I'm going to just call her on over. <laughs> this is Naomi. Yes. This is Naomi. She is the manager at our Fabulous Wilmore location. She's also my child. Yes. Don't yeah. worry about the fact that she, she thinks she can beat me or something. It's not happening. Okay. I don't know. Well, she, she said she'd never say it, but she's looking like it. Yeah. You know, she's looking like it, like she want to say something. <laughs> no, but she's fantastic. But yeah, so one thing is our blender, we're going to be opening up at the Woodmore Town Center. So what you see us doing here, um, blending the product, whipping the oils. Um, one thing you'll notice about products, especially if you bought our product before, when a product sits on the shelf for a long period of time, it settles and it's flat, but if you can get it whipped fresh, then it's fluffy, it's, it goes on differently. It looks like this, <laughs> okay? I know your product don't look like that when you go buy it from the beauty supply store. Stop the games, we all know it's not true, okay? Not to mention, have you heard from the, have you heard from the beauty supply store <laughs> that you frequent um, all the time and give all your money? Um, have you heard from them, have they checked on you? Probably not. So that's something else like, I don't know, it's a pet peeve of mine. I'm just kind of like, um, I at least need you to know my name. I need you to know my name because I shop here every day, all right? 
So I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just, just being for real. All right, so hopefully you'll want some of this before it's too late. <laughs> and we appreciate you guys. You guys have a blessed day and be safe out there.